Hi guys, this is Demon Rants, and today, uh, I don't know why I always say today, uh, I always do videos quite late, quite late where I am, but whatever, it doesn't really matter, it's kind of like my catchphrase, but anyways, so today, um, got another shirt and everything, uh, yellow shirt, so, with blue collar, so yeah, nice, but yeah, um, I was reading the comments of the last video, some of you gave some really good suggestions, some of you gave me some weird suggestions, but I took them into account. So, uh, yeah, but uh, a few of you actually did want me to do the album reviews. Some of you do like watching that kind of stuff. So, yeah, uh, I am going to continue the album review. So, yeah, today uh, we're going to be reviewing Load by Metallica. So, yeah, um, hold on, let's look at these notes here. Oh, yeah, I have to mention now, uh, I am actually an official college student now, so that's pretty cool. Um, maybe th there probably will be longer delays of videos because sometimes it's just... I'm not in the mood to make videos, honestly, anymore. I've been doing it for years. But other than, you know, let's cut the crap and actually get into the review. I've actually got some notes here and everything. Um, uh, but yeah, pretty much mentioned the last video. But yeah, so today we're going to be doing Load by Metallica. Why am I reviewing this particular Metallica album? Uh, because I think it's really underrated and really under underappreciated, you know. Sometimes it's a bit unappreciated and it's very divided in the fan base. You know, Metallica's a huge band, everybody knows them and everything like that. But yeah, they've they've done albums like Master of Puppets and, you know, the Black Album and everything that everybody can name and knows and loves and everything. But they've done albums like Saint Anger, which got absolutely trashed. And, you know, if you want to hear my opinions on that particular record, Saint Anger, I actually have an older video about that. But then you get ones like this, Load, which are kind of divided by fans some fans liked the changes but other fans just completely hated it and trashed it but yeah um today i'm going to be giving my thoughts on it but yeah first i'm going to mention why did i get this on cd i actually got this on cd because of my mum uh i actually um it was in a shop and everything like that and i think and i thought well load is pretty much the least heaviest metallica album you know it's not it's not thrash or anything like that so i thought it would be acceptable for my mum to listen to but even she thought this was a bit too bit too extreme and everything so yeah i guess she doesn't like rock that much but well this kind of rock but yeah anyways um let's have a look here so yeah load uh, before I get into the album's history and all that kind of stuff, we're going to talk about the actual album cover, uh, the box and everything, the CD, but yeah, so the album cover is, sorry if it reflects a little bit, guys, I know you, hope you can see it, but yeah, the album cover is, ooh, it's, a, it's a little bit, a little bit gross looking, I know it looks like flames and gasoline or whatever, but believe me, that is not oil, those are not flames, those are bodily fluids, mixed together. I won't tell you which ones, but it'll gross you out, so I won't. But in a way, it does kind of give the album a weird and unique feel to it, so I kind of like it in a way. It's very, you know, avant-garde, even though I won't tell you what the what this cover actually is, but yeah. And uh, yeah, so the cover's very weird, but I think it kind of represents life, and it looks very fiery, and it kind of fits the soul of the album but yeah uh, the font over here this was actually Metallica changed their logo from the traditional spiky one uh, to a more kind of subdued one it kind of looks like a glam logo I don't know the font isn't the best and uh, you know load and everything it's black like that so yeah probably wondering why it's called load it's called load because there was load and reload also load kind of fits what the album cover actually is Ugh. But yeah, so there's Load and Reload. I actually am going to do a separate review of Reload, but yeah. So that's the cover. The back of it is pretty much a picture of them, and it kind of sums up this era in a nutshell. You know, they were properly... They cut their hair. They were wearing suits, like pimp suits and everything. They were wearing sunglasses. They were actually wearing makeup and eye makeup and stuff like that, eyeshadow. So yeah, it pissed a lot of fans off, but yeah. And you get the tracks on the back. But yeah, pretty much... That picture sums up what they were like back then. Uh, that is the disc. That's actually a ninja star comprised of the old logo, the M with the spikes and everything put into a little ninja star. That's what the disc looks like. But yeah, overall, pretty nice CD, actually. The cover's very weird and avant-garde. And inside, there's a lot of pictures of them dressed up during this time because uh, pretty much the history behind it was that obviously the Black Album came out. 
If you don't care about Metallica, you can skip this video. But yeah, the Black Album came out and in 1991. It was huge. Like, it was Diamond Certification. There was tons of successful s singles and everything. And yeah, but a lot of fans didn't like it because they thought it was a bit too slowed down. It was a bit too hard rockish or standard heavy metal. It wasn't proper face mounting thrash. But yeah, but still, it was a massive success and it sold millions. But yeah, people were kind of, you know, wondering what was going to happen. 1992, they went with Guns N' Roses on the Montreal um, tour. And pretty much Axl Rose acted like a dick and caused the riot. So yeah, we know how, we know how that happened, but tragedy struck again. Uh, James Hetfield got burned alive on stage with pyrotechnics, so he actually nearly freaking died. Imagine a universe where the singer... Uh, James Hetfield over here. He doesn't look like that anymore, but yeah. Imagine a universe where he died right there. So, yeah, he was in hospital for a while, so they couldn't do a lot of material. 93 and 94, 1990, obviously. They didn't do very much then. Uh, but in 1995, they began recording new music, uh, you know, and playing some of the songs live. And in 1996, Load made its debut. And, uh, whoa... This album got some, this this it's got some shit back in the day. Let's just say that, you know, pretty much Load is pretty much Metallica's attempt at doing bluesy, country, hard rock type stuff. You know, alternative. So yeah, probably wasn't the best decision, but in my opinion, it turned out really good. They suited making this kind of music. So yeah, uh, and I like experimental music, so I gave this one a chance. But the thing was. Load and Reload, they never really caught my interest. I kind of found them like a blur. I didn't really care about them. But I listened to Hardwired, the new record, and it was very similar to Load and Reload. So I came back to them and I ended up loving them. Because, honestly, if I hated this album, why would I own it on the CD? Let's be honest. Uh, let's have a look at here. So, yeah, they changed their style, pretty much the genre. They all started wearing these kind of funny-looking outfits. They cut their hair and stuff. You know, it was Betrayal. But everybody was doing that in the 90s, you know, not once Nirvana, you know, Kurt Cobain died and Grunge pretty much died. Everybody was cutting their hair. But yeah, so yeah, Load, very controversial album, but we're going to go into the songs and my thoughts on them. So yeah, we're going to go through the entire track list rather quickly. Track number one, the opening track, Ain't My Bitch. Yep, Ain't My Bitch is your typical, you know, fast paced, you know, hard rock, you know, kind of like country kind of, you know, hard rock type stuff, you know, Ain't My Bitch. Some people were calling it sexist because it was apparently about a woman, but it's actually just a problem, you know, Ain't My Bitch, not my problem. And uh, it's very, the term butt rockish kind of reminds me of this song, you know, very country style guitars, you know, so yeah, so. Yeah, people were weirded out by it first, for a start, you know, all the country songs and everything like that. Country guitars, I mean, like proper twangy guitars. Ain't my bitch, yeah. And it's very different to their normal opening tracks because they'd usually have like a slower theme and then it would pick up and go fast. But Ain't My Bitch just goes straight into the heaviness or hard rock. Just checking these notes. Uh, Yeah, so let's carry on. So Ain't My Bitch, pretty fun song. I would keep that one. Uh, The next track... 2x4, um, very bluesy, this is a straight up bluesy type thing, you know, it's very groovy to listen to, you can kind of dance to it and everything like that, but the song is literally just about a block of wood, you know, put the screws into your, you know, friction fusion, like he's singing about a block of wood for God's sake, but yeah, even then it's still a really good song, it does go on for a bit too long, and there is a solo, which is like, it's like a really powerful type solo, like you'd hear in Master of Puppets or some shit, but it doesn't fit, the th it doesn't fit the overall bit of the song, because the song's a very bluesy kind of vibe to it, but it doesn't, there's a random solo in it, but yeah, 2 by 4 strange song, but I quite like it, and a lot of people do as well. And it was one of the first ones from Load they played live, so yeah. Uh, next song, very underrated, The House Jack Built. Now, this is a very, um, this is where the alternative grungy type stuff comes in. It's a very Alice in Chains sounding song. Uh, they've actually never played it live, so yeah, I wish they would. 
obviously they have a request um by request toys but nobody ever seems to vote songs like this and it kind of makes me mad but yeah you know the the chorus is great you know the higher you are the longer you fall i am the house the jack built it's properly like that i think it would be great to open up a concert but yeah, they never played it live. I have no idea why. It's an amazing bloody song. And there's a bit where he uses a talk box, which is like a weird guitar thing that you use with your mouth. You go, ooh, well, well, with your mouth and stuff. So, yeah, that was interesting. Uh, track number four, the first proper single of the album, got a music video, uh, Until It Sleeps. Now, I will, before I talk about the song, I'll mention the music video. The music video, I don't like. I watched it and it gave me the creeps. It was weird religious imagery. Obviously, them in their funny looking outfits back in the day, back in 1996. They had like makeup and were clawing at their own faces and stuff like that. Lars and Kirk. So, but, yeah. Uh, so, but the actual song is great. It's a very uh, alternative sounding song. The riff is very, you know, catchy, you know. Do, 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 you know, and the lyrics are about, you know, the lyrics are actually about cancer, I've heard. You know, tear me open, pull me out, you know. So, yeah, it's kind of, the song's very dark. I have to mention Load is probably where the lyrical content started with this band. I mean, they were always about their instruments, and I think And Justice For All was the best in terms of lyrics. But Load and Reload were, you know, very, you know, dark sounding you know, in terms of song meaning. So, yeah, I think it, it kind of makes this the record unique. But, yeah, Until It Sleeps, great freaking song. It's only about four minutes. It has, like, a short but sweet solo, but it's it's really good. But it is very dark. I've listened to it in times where I felt like it. But, yeah, uh, yeah, Until It Sleeps. The next song, King Nothing, which is the biggest song from the album. It's the big single everybody remembers. They still play it live a, f a few times. It's a bit like Enter Sandman. It's got a very slow kind of pace to it. Uh, the bass guitar is great. And uh, yeah, the meaning of the song is that it's about like a king who's pretty much, you know, been a ruthless tyrant and he's pretty much been rejected by his followers. People say it's about Donald Trump, but that's your opinion. Uh, yeah, so King Nothing, you know. And the crowd King Nothing! And the music video, very funny. It's uh, the singer James, he's walking through the forest with like sunglasses on. He's got a big furry coat on. He's walking through the forest and stuff. It's proper weird. King Nothing, great song. And it was a huge single. The next song, this is where we get into the good stuff, guys. Hero of the Day. Yes. Now, I love this song, even though it doesn't sound like, doesn't isn't metallic as normal sound. It is actually very happy sounding and, you know... Do, 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 you know, it's very, it's very happy sounding and everything like that. You know, off to find the hero of the day. So it's one of those songs that makes me happy. It makes me upbeat. And I know I did a video saying, oh, I don't like upbeat music, but that was just me being edgy. I don't really mean that. Hero of the day, though, it's great. The music video is a bit funny. It's like a druggie watching TV, and it's like the guys in Metallica. Uh, being different TV channels and stuff, so it's proper weird. Hero of the Day, though, it's quite a short song, short and sweet, but it's it's bloody amazing. I love this song. But yeah, it's very alternative sounding, kind of country sounding. There is a bit where the song does get quite intense. It's like it uses a lot of double bass pedals and stuff. But yeah, don't miss this song out, guys. It's great. It's a pretty big single, and yeah, I think uh, even the fans like this one. And uh, yeah, it's just very unique. The next song, Bleeding Me, this freaking song, masterpiece, I know I would put that up easily in the top 10, probably Hero of the Day as well, but Bleeding Me, it's an 8 minute long masterpiece, you know, it's, it's different to Hero of the Day, it's very sad and somber sounding, you know, bluesy kind of sounding, you know, the guitars are very like, soulful, and uh, even though it's eight minutes long, it feels like it goes for four minutes because the song is just takes you into another world. It's just freaking amazing. And uh, the the meaning of the song is that it's very it's very ambiguous. You know, it could really mean anything. Honestly, some people say that the song's about mental illness and everything like that. You know, bleeding me. I'm digging my way to something better. You know, uh, but yeah, it's a very sad sounding song. 
but it never got a music video. I really think it should have. The chorus is bloody amazing. Uh, I was actually going to do a singing video of this song. If anybody still wants me to do the singing video, please let me know. But yeah, Bleeding Me... Uh, what else can I say? Oh yeah, it does get very heavy, you know, there's a bit, I am the beast that feeds the feast. You know, it gets pretty heavy at those bits, but yeah, there's a guitar solo, the instruments are amazing. Freaking love this song. So, how do you lead up from an amazing, out-of-this-world track like Bleeding Me? Cure. Uh, yeah, the first... Bad song of the album. I shouldn't really say bad because it's honestly, you know, it's still listenable and everything. It's still a bit of a fun song. But it kind of rips off King Nothing a little bit. You know, I want the cure and stuff like that. It's very cheesy sounding. It's not very long. It's about three or four minutes long. And uh, it doesn't really offer anything to the table, anything new. And uh, they've never played it live, so they don't. they clearly don't like it. So yeah, cure, it didn't need to be there. It didn't need to exist. But the only bit of the song that I do like, it's kind of got a bit of a bass line and the singer's going yeah. He's doing all these weird sounds with his voice and it's, you know, very... Gets in my ears and stuff. I thought I, thought I like that bit. But yeah, Cure, don't like it that much. Poor Twisted Me, kind of similar. It's very like country sound, you know, proper country guitars and everything like that. But the song's just very bizarre sounding. It kind of puts me in a weird mood, rubs me the wrong way. You know, poor old Twisted Me! He does like a weird thing with his voice if you've ever listened to that song. But yeah, poor Twisted Me. Sometimes I can listen to it, but honestly, it's not a favourite. Uh, the next song, Wasting My Hate. A lot, probably the heaviest on load. It's the heaviest song on load, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, it's a very fast paced song and everything. You know, Waste My Hate On You. You know, it's pretty much what you think it is. It's kind of response to the haters, but it's not overly obnoxious. So, yeah, it kind of gets you in that mood. It's not like pure rage or anything, but it does kind of lift your spirits up and kind of makes you feel a bit, you know, in the fighting mood. Similar to Ain't My Bitch. Wasting My Hate, good song. Next song, now, this song um, is called Mama Said. But yeah, Mama Said, Mama Said, whatever. I would call this song a masterpiece, even though it is straight up country. Nothing more, nothing less. But the lyrics are just incredible. The song is actually about this, the main singer's mother. So another very dark sounding song. It's about his mum and everything. It's a very sad kind of sounding song and everything. But yeah, you know. But I took your love for granted. You know, let mama let my heart go. You know, and the music video is sitting in the back of his car and he's wearing a cowboy costume. But it ends up just being like a projector and everything like that. It's pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, Mama said it's got really twangy sounding guitars like... New, 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 new. Guitars like that. But yeah, I, I think this song's a masterpiece just because of the lyrics and meaning behind it. And even though it is them doing a country song, it sounds very good. James is really great at singing the guitars work. And I wish they would actually play it live. Mama said, definitely keep it. The next song, Thorn Within, eh, it's a bit of a filler track. The only bit of the song I like is the Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned bit. You know, it's kind of some good lyrics there, but it goes on for too long. It doesn't offer much. It doesn't really need to be there. The song does remind me of the song Here Comes Revenge from Hardwired, if anybody really cares. But yeah, I don't really like it that much. Uh, Ronnie... Another straight up cheesy type of country bluesy song, you know. And blood stains the sun red today. Now I do think it is on a bit on the filler side. It's very cheesy. Like he starts speaking and saying, "Oh, the children see Ronnie. He pulls a gun out of his pocket and stuff like that." But it is a very fun song to listen to and everything like that. You know, I said I lost my way this bloody day and the song is actually about a school shooter believe it or not the song is about a school shooter i guess his name was ron but yeah ronnie they made a song about him so yeah but they never played it live even though i think they should but yeah this this is not traditional metallica but yeah ronnie pretty good song but it is on the filler side and the last song the f closing track another bloody masterpiece the Outlaw Torn. This song, whoa, 
great closing track. It's different than most of Metallica's closing tracks because it's not a full-on fast, speedy one to like put you in like a yeah. This album was badass. I want to listen to it again. The Outlaw tones are very. It's like a nine-minute-long country kind of like. It makes you think of being in the Wild West with like the cowboys, you know. And I will wait my whole lifetime for you. It makes me think of being in the Wild West, and even though it's nine minutes long, it, it manages to fit the time pretty well. Definitely keep that one. It's one of their best closing songs. Uh, and yeah, they've played it live a few times. And yeah, I wish they would play it more often. I think Bleeding Me should be the standard of the set list as well. But yeah, Outlaw Torn, bloody masterpiece. Got some really good guitars and bass in it and everything. And the singing and... What else can I say? I love stuff to do with the Wild West. And it makes me think of the Cowboys and everything fighting. And, you know, it's the, it's the Outlaw Torn. What else can you say? So yeah, that is Load in its entirety. Uh, we're going to talk about my views of it. What are my favourite tracks? Uh, Until It Sleeps, I think, is a really good one. It's close to me. Uh, Hero of the Day, Bleeding Me and the Outlaw Torn are masterpieces, I think. Mama said it's kind of a masterpiece, but it is a straight-up country song if that rubs you the wrong way. And the other songs are pretty damn good. So there are no bad songs on this record. It's just different. But yeah, so why do I love the album? I love the album because it was it's experimental music, but it was very well made and everything. The production values are great. This is from 96, but it still sounds good to this day. So yeah, the drumming's really crisp sounding. All of the um, instruments are great. <coughs> and it still works to this day, honestly. It's held up very well. You know, people were trashing it back in the day, but they're starting to like it more. But you still get the elitists hating on it. Like, I think the singer of Pantera says, Oh, Load should have never been released! And had, like, a big hissy fit. So, yeah, fuck that guy. But, you know, Pantera, you try and make an album like Load. Just kidding. No offence to Pantera. But, yeah, uh, what I was going to say, obviously the big criticism towards this album is selling out. Which, other than the whole clothes thing, which was pretty questionable for them to just randomly do that, I don't, I honestly think they changed the genres and they did it really well. Now, maybe they should have done it under a different name than Metallica, because it's not metal in the slightest. This is like hard rock at the most. But honestly, if they would have sold out, they just would have released any old crap, you know, strumming on random instruments but clearly load and reload as well we're going to talk about on another video they were clearly made with love and you know dedication so i think they should exist and people ignore the amazing tracks like i just mentioned before but yeah if they would have sold out sold out they would have just done any old crap but this was made with care it was made with love but it it was clearly not what people were asking for but i personally think it came out really well with some gems on this record um just yeah so the the singing as well this was a this was when james was properly using the whole yeah and stuff like that you know the yes and all this kind of like duh, 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 yeah, with his voice but it is a little bit cheesy but it's just fun it's just fun to listen to that's the thing load and reload they were clearly having fun making him and they're also very fun to listen to and jam to and honestly you may crucify me for saying this but I think Load and Reload as well down there. I think they're better than Kill 'Em All. Maybe not the first, the other three 80s albums and the Black Album, but I think they're better than Kill 'Em All in production and, you know, lyrical content because I, I like the soft stuff, guys. I won't lie. I like the softer music. And you may crucify me for saying that, but pff, it's my opinion, really, at the end of the day. Uh, yeah, so the country and bluesy stuff really works. You know, it's different sounding. Uh, you know, obviously clearly they sold millions and everything because Metallica hadn't released anything in like five or six years. So obviously they were sold like hotcakes. But yeah, honest, honestly, if they sold out, they just wouldn't have cared. But they clearly did. And, uh, you know, due to Load and Reload's success, Megadeth kind of copied them in a way. No offence to Megadeth. I like Megadeth as well. But Megadeth did um, Cryptic Writings and Risk, which Risk is complete crap. It's just bought. <coughs> My voice, God damn it, guys. Uh, Risk is just boring. It's just a boring album. But Cryptic Writings was pretty good. But they pretty much tried this style, you know, slower alternative stuff than the, rather than the thrash. But honestly, they worked. And uh, yeah, but Load, 
pretty damn good. Overall, we're going to sum it up here. I think I've pretty much mentioned everything. Overall comments, pretty much. I'd say you should get this one. I don't know why people ignore its existence when it's full of so many gems. I forgot about the house jack built as well. That was a good one. But yeah, it's full of so many gems. And honestly, I think the reason why people hated it was just because of the style change. And the whole, you know, attitude they kind of had. Hey, attitude is a song on Reload. Ha, <laughs> jokes. Anyway. But yeah, I really love this one. I would put Load in my top five of Metallica's albums. I think it does a lot better than some of them. But people seem to take it for granted in a way. And the songs don't get played live. And it kind of upsets me. But that's pretty much it. Uh, instruments have held up really well. They did really good at changing styles. The lyrics are close to home to me. And um, people want to hate it. They, they just look like stupid, like, you know, elitist metalheads. You know, ooh, Metallica should just do this stuff. But, yeah. It may it may not have been what people demanded, but it came out good. So, um, yeah, we're going to finish this video soon. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Um, the next video is actually going to be Reload. Because even though they're a double album, I think they're very different sounding. So, yeah, Load is very country and bluesy sounding. And Reload is kind of a bit more hard rock sounding. And we're going to get into the songs uh, next on the next video. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. It's been a very long type of video here. Uh, but, yeah, Load... Is a personal album to my heart, and I don't think people appreciate it the way they should. So yeah, um, I'll put this CD down now. I think I mentioned everything that I wanted to. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you enjoyed the video. It might be a break until the other one, but yeah. Thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned for the Reload review. So yeah, peace. Check out Load. Listen to Load. It's pretty damn good.